Welcome to Jumpstart Your Joy. This season is all about intentional comfort, and we'll be taking a look at the crossroads of the inspiration, intention, and action that you can take to bring more comfort and joy to your everyday. This is your host, Paula Jenkins. Welcome to episode 301 here on Jumpstart Your Joy. On this week's show, I'm really excited to be joined by Jacqueline Jackson and she has a super interesting business where she does home inspections, sound baths, and home healings. I just love that she's really embraced her multi-passionate personality and that she's really leaning into doing two things that she loves so much and that tie so beautifully together. So Jacqueline is a certified professional home inspector and she's a certified spiritual energetic protection professional. So she does this amazing mix of doing home inspections ahead of real estate transactions that are currently in process. She also helps people if they have bad vibes or weird energy in their home and they need help clearing it out. And she also helps people who are about to put their home on the market and want to better understand maybe some of the fixes or things that they need to know before they go to sell their home. I just love the energy and openness that Jacqueline brings to both of these sides of her business. It is really a treat to better understand how home inspections work and to also learn about someone who provides sound baths and home healing and speaks to the spiritual side of a person as well as their home being a financial investment. It's such an amazing combo and such a treat to get to hear her talk about it. Before we bring Jacqueline on, I want to wish you all a very warm welcome and say thank you so much for tuning in. I love being able to do this podcast so much. And of course, this season is all about intentional comfort. Last season, last year, we were talking about the messy middle, which is where we found ourselves in the middle of the pandemic with so much unrest being present in our lives. And now we're talking about how can we find comfort and really lean into that where it is an intentional choice and a mindful choice for comfort and not just numbing out and sitting on our couch with Netflix and tortilla chips. Maybe it's just me. But so that's what we're talking about this season. If you want to find out more about Jumpstart Your Joy and listen to 300 past episodes or learn more about the giveaway that I had last week, you can find it all at the website, which is jumpstartyourjoy.com. While you're there, you can find episode notes for this episode, 300. I'll link over to Jacqueline's website and all the things that we talk about so you can get in touch with her. You can also find that right there in your podcasting app. If you have one on your phone and you're listening, just tap into those show notes and you'll see the link right there. But don't leave yet. You're going to want to listen to the whole thing. And while you're on the website, you can also find my book, which is Jumpstart Your Joy, Heart-Centered Ways to Find Joy in the Messy Middle. Or you could sign up for the newsletter, which will give you a little nudge each time an episode is out. And I also share five or so joyful things every week that are specially curated to bring more intentional comfort, more joy to your life. I hope you will sign up. So diving into this conversation, I just love hearing about how Jacqueline has woven together these different sides of herself and acknowledged that she's a multi-passionate personality and that she wanted to do two things instead of just one. I love that we are talking about how she welcomes people home in so many ways, both to their physical home and, and to their spiritual well-being. It's really a delight to hear it because I think it's such an unusual mix of professions. And I love she's going to give us some tips about how to reset the energy of your home if it feels off. Some of the things that you might want to think about if you're a homeowner to keep your home in good repair and some of the top things to look out for as a homeowner. And we're also going to talk more about how to find intentional comfort and joy. So I'm so excited that Jacqueline is here. Welcome to the show, Jacqueline Jackson. Yay, I'm happy to be here. Very excited. (laughs) I'm so delighted to get to have you on because you have such an interesting job and such a lovely background. Before we jump into what you do and all that, would you tell us what you loved most as a child or in school? What were your earliest sparks of joy? I was a dancer my whole life (laughs) from five years old till around 20. I was always really good at getting my homework done either at lunch or after school because I had to be my, to my dance classes. So yeah, that was really important. And then my other passion that really brought me joy, they combined together is a photography. So I really loved it. I was on every school paper, like in second grade, being the paparazzi, being in everybody's business. (laughs) 
<laughs> but I was like, this has to be documented. I, I felt a lot of joy in both those things growing up. That's amazing. Mm, yeah, I I was in gymnastics for a while. There is a certain joy in just like moving your body and like seeing what your body can do and like just kind of being amazed by it all. For listeners, we met through the amazing Michelle Ward and which means many things, <laughs> which one of which is that we are both likely multi-passionate people, meaning we can't just decide what we want to do when we grow up. It, like there's a multiple of things that delight and interest us. And I think that always creates an interesting crossroads for people because then you're reimagining how things get done because you're pulling from all these different pools of interest. But so you're a home inspector and on your site, it says a certified spiritual energetic protection professional or a home healer. How did you get into this space? Like which one came first for you? I lived in an ashram for a while in North Carolina and I learned a lot about different spiritual practices and growing up, I learned about different spiritual practices as well and energy and music and all these things. I put that on the back burner forever because I thought it was too woohoo and I didn't want to express any of those things, <laughs> but I became a property manager. I worked like front desk and in high rise luxury condos. And then I started to do what I wanted to do for a long time. I was a property manager on site. So I lived at the different buildings and I was helping people every day. And that's when I really found out that almost nothing is an emergency. I yes. felt during life and during renting and being around people, like people would really go, oh, oh my God, I need you at this exact second. My garbage disposal is then Throughout that time of working and solving problems with vendors and with different people, I um, became very confident in knowing how to see a problem and find a solution, find the right person to do it and make sure it was done properly. And then I found out that there was a job for that, being a home inspector, which is less emotional. You don't have to live there and see the people complaining and <laughs> you're there just for that one time. But what I was always looking for in my life is living with integrity, living with purpose. And I felt like I worked for so many people throughout my life that I had to follow their plans. And it was challenging for me, the notices, the rental increases, all those things are threatening to people and they're not, I have to deliver them, but they're from the owner. And I just, ah, I was like, there has to be a way for me to still do this, which I find so much passion, so much love helping people without all that. So for the home inspection, I'm able to express that. I'm able to find things to help them, give them a heads up about safety and yeah, so the spiritual stuff was there. I, I did yoga for years too. I did all these kind of things. But when I started my business, I was like, I need to combine what I love. I'm the type of person who kind of gets bored. I'm, you know, multi-passionate. So I get bored. I'm like, I have to create a job that I don't want to quit. Yeah. So that's why I had to take this risk. And I had to really step out of my comfort zone and be like, no, let me do what I know how to do. <laughs> mm. Yes. And I, there's the piece in there, cause I can totally relate to this about, so I was a life coach for a while. And what I noticed, especially during the pandemic was it became kind of a drain. Like I love doing my work of podcast production, but then to add in and layer in this piece of being there for people and holding space, that was too much. What you were saying about being the um, property manager. And I also found that to be true when I was working in a nine to five, where it was like, people would tell me what to do and I could do it. But then there would be all this feedback that sometimes was not unemotional, <laughs> some rather charged kinds of things. And it just felt like paying attention to all of that energetic piece. It, it kind of gave me a lot of clues about, Ooh, I would really rather be able to do something that is not as connected to what people are worried about. Or like you said, that there's no threat in being a podcast producer, really. So I love that you followed the energy of it and knew what you needed. Cause I think so many people neglect that for themselves. Yeah. It's, you know, the type of person who wants to help all the time, <laughs> but then you just become like the kicking bag. <laughs> yeah. So it's, I also find a lot more joy now too, because people say, thank you. I remember so many times that's not the point of doing things nice for people or bending over backwards, but I would bend over backwards, go in water, sue it. I just, so many things I did for people. And they'd yeah. be like, bye, <laughs> instead of thank you. So I'm so happy now. I feel like for my integrity and for everything that I feel, 
mm-hmm. I can leave, I leave the job site knowing I did a good job and they say, thank you. So I'm like, you know, we can't just keep living like that. <laughs> so true. Yeah. I know for myself too, like then now in a role where I'm freelance and it's by project, it's, I can definitely decide if I want to over deliver and delight them. And then that's magical. <laughs> and then like you're saying, I like to, I get to leave feeling like, oh my gosh, I delighted those people instead of now they're expecting that every time. And I've dug a hole for myself <laughs> where I can't always overperform for every job that I'm on or in the office. Yeah. That's super interesting. What drew you to the career as home inspector? Was there something specific about it that like, how did you make the jump? Cause I, I heard you say that you felt like it was a good place to go, but like, how did you make that jump? Well, I did a lot of research. I um, had as a property manager, you have flexibility, time, flexibility. You work a lot and then you work, then you have some downtime. So I did one-on-one training in person. This is before the pandemic. I went around all of LA for up to like six hours, like driving a day, a lot of one-on-one training with this gentleman to figure out if I want to do it or not. I can't just move out (laughs) and leave my career if this isn't serious. So I went all, I went to all the different cities in LA and Orange County and I started to figure out, okay, I like this. You're there. You find uh, some problems, some things that need to be repaired now and in the future. You let the person know, then you go home and write up your report or, you know, you do as much as you can on site and do you deliver it and that's it. <laughs> but I had to physically go. I mean, I, I saw all different types of houses. I saw houses that were completely run down, barely livable. I saw really beautiful, nice condos, different types of situations, but physically doing the job made me want to do it. So yeah. I paid this gentleman to teach me and I learned a lot. I love that you got curious about the work and then went out and tried it. Cause I think so many people, especially entrepreneurs, they're like, I know this nine to five thing is not what I want or this job that I'm doing is not what I want, but I don't really know what else it is. And and I also love the undercurrent here of when you're talking about sound baths that you knew that there was this inspirational side of things that you love so much, allowing ourselves to explore and figure out what that thing is before we just fully commit all in on something is so key. And I don't know that it's something that like is really encouraged in school. Like we almost are told you have to figure out this path. It has to be a narrow and linear line. And like, then you'll get it and you'll be a whatever. And I don't, I really don't think that's how careers and lives work for a lot of people. So I love that you're sharing those pieces. So how, so let's dive into the sound bath, no pun intended, but like how, I mean, first, will you tell us and explain what it is? Because I'm sure some people listening are not familiar with a sound bath. Well, basically a sound bath is an acoustic live concert that's helped you to get into a deep meditative state. So instead of sitting in silence, you sit with different instruments that help you get there. So it's like a fast track to meditation because you have something to hold on to, (laughs) which is the sound. Yeah. This is interesting to me because labyrinths are also that same kind of thing for people is The thing that I hear from a lot of folks is that meditation is hard because my brain is so busy and on all the time. So it's hard for me to make that jump. Just sitting feels almost intimidating. So it sounds like sound baths offer that same thing. It's like kind of a container for being able to get into meditation. Yes. Very cool. (laughs) Okay. Now I'm loving it even more. I have not done one. I've seen them, but I've never done one. Yeah. So how does it work? Is it usually in a group or is it something that you do one-on-one or how can people approach a sound bath? Well, the, the funny part is I feel like it's having a really big resurgence right now. Mm-hmm. And I've been going to sound baths for 10 years. So <laughs> everyone's like, oh, I just heard about it yesterday. <laughs> this last year or something. So one of the coolest sound baths that I've ever been to was at the ashram in um, North Carolina. And from my experience, sound baths have always been group sound baths but there's a bunch of people together laying down on yoga mats all cuddled up and relaxed and you all just enjoy the music and the vibrations and everyone relaxes when I decided to have a business I decided that I wanted to research the market and also learn the different aspects so there's vibrational medicine where you actually put the bowls on your body physically oh wow yeah Mm -hmm. vibrational sound medicine and I also 
So I had a bunch of those services done. I've had them. I've gone, <laughs> I've gone to the one-on-one -on -one services. I've created my own one-on-one -on -one service. But for the most part, if you're just looking online at a website to, I want to go to a sound bath next week, it's 99.9% .9 going to be a group sound bath with different people. That's very cool. Yeah. It's also interesting how the world seems to be needing these tools. Like we collectively are trying to find ways to calm ourselves and to find that intentional comfort and maybe reconnect with the spiritual in a way. I've talked to so many different types of people, especially with all the events I've done this month. I did um, seven events this month and uh, without trying to guarantee anything, I will tell you that I've had a lot of feedback that it's, it gets you to a relaxed state of state without drugs. So some people say like drugs or alcohol helps them relax and get so they can have a good night rest or they can, I don't know, whatever they're doing, relax, relaxing, but I've heard it loud and clear. Thank mm -hmm. you for giving me an alternative to drugs and alcohol. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Because I think probably a lot of people found um, themselves in one way or another, whether it was hours of watching Netflix or drinking or numbing out just because what do we do with the last two years? There's so much to process that sometimes our whole body and our whole nervous system just needs the break. And our mind wants to just stop running of what the heck is this? That's really interesting. And obviously we encourage people <laughs> if you're in that place, please find another way. That's one of the reasons why intentional comfort became the theme for this season for me is because it just felt like we all are longing for that pause and that reset and that reconnection to something that's more than our couch. Well, I, I also see a need in multiple areas that are mm -hmm. un unconventional. So for example, I had a residency at a brewery. They're not my typical clientele. You wouldn't think maybe yoga studios or whatever, but that's my, that was my biggest turnout and the most respectful people. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've been in a yoga class before. A yoga class. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where that person who's never been to yoga before they slam their mat down and they're all loud dropped a bag. <laughs> yes. I'm here. I, was, I have all the gear. <laughs> I was expecting that. Do you know, these people are so respectful mm. tiptoeing in when they're late, putting their stuff down quietly. Just, mm. I found the most beautiful people in a, in a setting that I didn't know how it was going to be. So talk about drugs and alcohol. I'm not saying all drugs and alcohol is bad, but if you're only doing that to relax and you have no outlet, it's good to find other options. <laughs> So I had a lot of people, some people like, Ooh, I want to go to a sound bath at a brewery. I'm like, you don't have to drink. You just come do the sound bath. So that's what some people did. They just came to do the sound bath, but I think it's who you surround yourself with too. The brewery that I was at common space brewery, I will call them out because they're amazing. Good quality people. Yeah. That's the only thing that I, that's the main part about my business and my life. Now I'm going to surround myself with people who are good, who are nice, who are respectful. We were at a brewery, but they put me in the quietest space, hmm. nice open space in the back where they have like weddings and quiet things. So even they were respectful for me, the people that I didn't even know, all these new people that I met respectful. So hmm. I think there's something in that when you're living the best way that you can and trying to improve yourself, you can start attracting people that are similar to that. Yeah. Well, and I feel like the through lane here is that vibrational energy of beyond just the immediacy of a sound bath being that way. That is exactly the vibe and the energy that you're putting out. And so, yes, people react to that. We do naturally draw in people who are joyful or respectful or uh, live in integrity, If that's that, that, since I know that's one of your values too. So yeah, it is really interesting that the vibe that we put out there also brings in the same kind of people and sound waves and all that. Like, so interesting. I know that we also talked a little bit ahead of the call about how energy can kind of impact people's homes. And I know one of the services that you offer is like helping clean out bad energy or stale energy. How do you go about that? And if somebody's like, yeah, my house is, I'm not feeling it here. Like what should somebody be noticing and what can they do if they feel like it's not, it's energetically not right for them? Well, there'll be patterns. That's one thing. Patterns, if I do a home that is already lived in, people are already living in there, then they'll let me know and then I'll fill out deeper energy blockages. And there's been research done, there's different studies, even just the sound of a, a little tincha, it's like ding, just those can move the waves, can move stagnant energy out of the way. The main thing that 
is the issue is the repetitive habits and things. So for example, if you live there already, you will keep fighting in the kitchen. <laughs> you will keep screaming at your kid in the bedroom. So those areas need to be addressed first. Mm-hmm. Or for my home healing package, that's before people move in. Right. I walk around. There's so much energy, especially in now, like this time of market where the homes are selling. There's so much competition and there's so many things happening. So many corners being cut, things of that nature to get the homes. You don't know what was there. And for me, when I purchased my home, it had fallen out of escrow four times. Oh, wow. So I tested all these um, techniques and things that I learned prior to starting the business <laughs> because mm-hmm. I wanted to make sure it worked. Yeah. You can feel it, the heartbreak, the even all the vendors, they're not always coming with the best intentions. They're just coming to get their job done. They're So it, it goes deeper than just walking around with my little tincha, ding, ding, ding. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I've done a lot of different energies and even like you said, our intentions. Mm -hmm. So I'm going there with an intention to move things out and bring good in. So even they can feel it. uh, For example, I used to work for a woman, multiple women, multiple, I used to be a nanny Mm -hmm. and they would always tell me, you are so calm with these children that are challenging. And so uh, that's what I've been able to take with me from high school all the way till now is the ability to be a neutral party. It's a little bit cold in terms of my focus I'm focused but it's a level of calm that is is needed like I said I've had this for so long especially with the property management I would be able to see these people's problems and way they communicated and break it down in my head and on paper oh my gosh if they would let me I could help them I could really help them Mm -hmm. you know it's not my place and it's not what was in my business but now it's very helpful to see that And as you're talking about the energy that's left in a home, like so, this home that we have was a short sale. And it's interesting because I can feel, I know there was a lot of heartache in this house and that, and it even goes further than that before them. This is so interesting. Before that, there was a woman who lived here with her grandson and he was very troubled and would throw massive parties. So we've heard, and it was so interesting because she she felt so strongly that the energy needed to shift in this home that she planted 13 rose bushes and prayed the rosary every day for a month or something in our front in our front courtyard. So there's something going on here. Like, <laughs> like, like how interesting. And now we've moved them because 13 seemed like a weird number to me. And there were too many bushes out there. So I was like, let's just replant some of these. But it was interesting to see that like people. I think the last family, it was very sad. They were very sad. There was something going on there and you could just feel the sadness. And now I feel like I've brought a lot of joy here, but like, can people do that in their own home? If they know that either on paper, there's a history or you can just sense it. Like, you know, something was up. Yeah. The, um, there's a lot of different techniques you can use. If you live in a home already, I would start by cleaning, getting rid of things you don't need because your emotions are being held onto the papers too. (laughs) Mm, that's holding some energy and even clothes or books or different things donate so cleaning out a space is the first step I would say like for clearing if you already live there and then taking a little bit of time to be honest with how you feel I think that's the thing with uh, real estate you're in a rush no matter what situation Mm -hmm. is it seems like we're always in a rush to make this decision yeah so you need to sit with it a little bit and your intention you can burn sage to clear out the energy and then you could burn Palo Santo to make the, set the intention. But if you're not into those things, you could literally clean up the house. And then, like I said, write out something that you, your intention of what you want to change. Your words are really powerful. So if you speak something strongly, then you can help it become, you know, your reality. Yeah. Mm, That's so powerful. It's so beautiful. And so I can never really even thought about that pattern in this home. Like, (laughs) And now I kind of, like, I tell the house, like, you're safe. I love you. Like, we're (laughs) delighted to be here. I like to think some of that has moved along, but yeah, so interesting. I also love what you said about like cleaning out and clearing out. We were talking about, uh, I was, I'm cleaning out a bunch of clothes because I feel like they've just been sitting up there and, and truly 
interestingly enough, Stacia Savasic is a style coach or a, basically, but one of the things she's got us doing in this class that I'm taking is like going through your clothes. This is kind of Marie Kondo, but putting it on, does this actually make you feel good? Does this like light your soul fire? And so I know that there's these two space bags full of like air quotes, sentimental clothes in my closet. And there are some big stories wrapped up in what I'm bringing them out. And, and one of the t-shirts has been there forever. I washed it last night and it destroyed all of the other clothes in the washer. Now, if that's not energy, <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know what that is. So I'm, I'm sure, and I don't know if you have suggestions on this one, but if someone is in that place where they, they're the best of intentions, they're trying to make it right. And something's putting up a fight. Like, is there something more we can do? to like help clear that energy? Like, what do I need to do with the washer right now? I would say for my home inspection side, my technical gal side, maintenance. Deferred maintenance is the biggest problem I see every day when I go to homes. Yeah. The windowsill wouldn't have fallen off if you sealed the cracks and painted it yeah. properly with outdoor paint. So maintenance, the same as you need to maintain yourself by brushing your teeth and showering and things, we have to maintain the things around us, which like I said, takes a little more time than most of us are wanting to do. Yeah. But cleaning and maintenance, that would really help. When's the last time you took your washing machine out and cleaned the hoses behind there? <laughs> Who does <Yeah>. that? <laughs> That's interesting because we did just take apart the dryer and give it a new hose. So maybe the washer is like, wait a minute. <laughs> I need some help over here. I'm ruining your shirt. <laughs> well, I was surprised. I've seen um, during my home property management days, yeah. people would get those clogged. I'm like, how? You're putting tissue in your pockets. <laughs> yeah, we swap things of that now. nature. But um, just cleaning those out, it's like a detox. Yeah. And sometimes we don't want to do it. That's why you have to go to the juice lady and buy the week of juices. Or that's how. That's who I am. Like I will come and do some of the work you didn't want to do and help you get to the work that you need done. Yeah. I think the, the neutral part of it is really, really powerful for me. And from what I heard from my clients, because I, they fill out an intake form, but I come with the purest intentions. Sometimes when you're doing your own cleansing at your house for yourself, you're thinking only about yourself. Oh, I'm doing this because I want my husband to stop acting like this. When I come, I'm looking out for the collective. Right. So <laughs> that's the difference. Yeah. And that's powerful too, because I know when we've had a home inspection, I mean, I still have the list and there's still, you know, some things that were like, you can wait on these. And obviously we have, but there's no emotion about it. It's just like, oh, here's a container. I should take care of these things for the betterment of the home and for us. So yeah, I think there is something nice about that. I'll go look at the washer <laughs> later today. <laughs> well, that's a way I was going to say this really quickly. Yeah, um, that's what I've learned so much research before I jumped into this career for home inspections. The realtors would be like, I don't like the way you guys deliver the information. It's too harsh or whatever. So I found that I'm not going to sugarcoat things. I'm not going to pretend or lie, mm -hmm. but there is a way to explain something to someone without making them flip out. For example, this roof is 25 years old and the homeowner that they've called on the phone, they don't want to replace it. Now I'm just letting you know, clearly this, you know, as you can see in my photos and where I'm, what I'm saying, it needs to be replaced. That's where the empowerment comes to me as well with my work. Yeah. You have to make a choice. This is now your responsibility. As another example, hot water heaters or electrical panels. Those are three big things. Roofs, hot water heaters, and electrical panels. Okay, maybe they have been working for the last 40 years and they're still working. When they collapse, <laughs> you know, if they worked past their lifetime, mm -hmm. you need to be ready to take on that new project, which is, you know, responsibility and empowerment thing where that's your choice. But I, I'm not going to lie. I know, I know there's a little bit of... Uh, weird stuff in this industry that I'm not all about. Sure. Just like make, oh, it's great. Everything's fine. Or warranties. There's, you can get a warranty for leaks and they'll like patch it or whatever, but there's no warranty that's going to replace a $14,000 roof. There right. isn't. Yeah. And so that's where I'm coming from with my home inspections. When I communicate to the clients, I have physically bought and sold homes. So I know what 
the shortcuts are. Right. When I bought my house, they the seller said the roof was fine. I never had a problem. He's a flipper though. So he has only been here enough time to flip it. I had to get four roof quotes to prove to this man that it was not okay. Because I said it wasn't okay from my experience. But so that's what I tell people when I'm at the job site. I'm like, okay, just because the seller said this hot water heater has been pumping for 40 years and it's making hot water at this moment, it will crash. <laughs> we yeah. need to be prepared for that. So I communicate clearly to them. You just have to be prepared for the future, but I'm definitely not going to um, lie <laughs> just to get the, just to get someone to go away or leave them alone or whatever, or make a purchase or like whoever yeah, yeah, the yeah. one that's contracted with the inv- inspector. Yeah. And homes are a, a sticky topic, right? Because there's so much emotion wrapped up in the idea of home, but then it's also truly a financial investment and something that needs to be maintained. And I think so many of us have that hard space of decoupling the two of like, and then it, so it becomes emotional. And I think that's something to remind ourselves about on lots of things. It's like, if we just pull the emotion out of this, is the decision good and timely or is it not needed? That's where the it comes full circle with yeah. emergencies. Yeah. Doing all that property management and with people telling me these emergencies, now I can really explain to someone, okay, you need to get your drain snake once a year to avoid that. You need to get them checked, you know, make sure there's no, no roots intrusion, or there's a lot of preventative things. It's like a doctor, <laughs> like you, you know, like our holistic doctor, like you can mm-hmm. eat healthy food and you can have vitamins, but if you don't have the money to fix it, it's okay. You can put a tarp on your roof for the moment. And to when you save up or use your home equity, you can get the new roof. I think as a society, we often allow ourselves to get into emergency kind of mentality. Then we layer on a different emotion with that thing. And it's like, no, I have to do it now. And then, like you said, we're kind of back on our heels, so to speak. And we're in a space where we're not making great decisions. And that's probably where we take the first bid for this new roof. But it becomes easy to make a weird mistake because we feel like we have to do it right now. So I love that you're like, no, we can pause. Yeah, <laughs> you don't you don't have to like completely gut the house. Yeah. I feel like some people think that sometimes, you know, when you deliver findings, oh, this needs to be done, that needs to be done. This is you're usually getting into a house for a longer term. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. you have time <laughs> to do things. And that's why a condo is a good option. I've been doing a lot of condos lately. And I feel like if you're just tiptoeing into the home ownership, a condo is a really good option because you do have to pay an HOA, but they take care of most things. Most of the external things, like, you know, the pipes that go through the walls for your AC that go to your neighbors and a lot of things are taken care of. You don't have to worry about the yard. You, you have security with a front desk. Mm-hmm. So I find that I, I feel like I want everyone to have a nice place, safe and healthy to live in. But there's so many options. You don't have to get a million dollar house. You can get a condo. You can get, there's a lot of choices. I love that your business and that you're very clear about this upfront on your website, but that you have built it around self-care as one of your brand values, along with integrity and that you very intentionally built this business so that you, you can offer what you offer and that it looks like you've built in time for yourself by your hours and all of that. How have you gone about that? And do you have suggestions for entrepreneurs? And there's a lot of coaches that listen to this show, but like, how do we set ourselves up for that? Because I think a lot of people struggle with how do I make my life fit the way I want it? Well, I had struggled with that in the beginning until I made a really big decision to hire someone to answer the phone. Now, as a business, you know, with the website, I had never had a website before. I had to hire someone, really good people to help me. And I had to hire some really good people to answer the phones for me because that was my, one of my biggest triggers or issues at my last at property management because I'm getting calls at 10 PM. I'm getting calls at 6 AM. I, my phone is giving me a lot of stress. Yeah. So I guess as an entrepreneur, business person, or even just anyone that's in a job setting, think and be honest with yourself. What drives you nuts? What is making you crazy? And it was the phone for me. And that's hard for me because I want to talk directly to the clients all the time. I want to get to know them. So usually my phone gal and guy will 
book the appointment for me or it'll be booked online, but I'm still touching base before. I will call Mm -hmm. in a daytime hour (laughs) and tell them, hey, I'm going to see you tomorrow. I just want to introduce myself. My name is Jacqueline. Is there anything that you're really concerned about or whatever? I'll um, usually touch base with them before or I'll, I'll have known the realtor before and we know what's up. So what happened to me when I was trained Mm-hmm. Every time the gentleman, he had, he hired a person. Okay. He hired someone to answer his phone to take payments. But every time we would go to the home inspection, he'd be like, who's the client who paid who, whatever. Mm-hmm. There's yeah. no connection for me. I do pre-work. I know their name. I know who, where I'm going with them. I bring them a home maintenance book, mm-hmm. especially for new home own- owners. There's a lot of things that they don't know and things that they should be doing annually. So I provide them with a home maintenance book. And then on the spiritual side, it's not even spiritual. It's more just kind hearted. I provide them usually a card that says something positive or something about resilience because the home buying process is challenging. Mm -hmm. No matter what you do, even if you have a a bunch of money, you still have to work with other people and they could be falling short. So I, I will provide some type of positive card or statement to help them get through the process. So when things start getting tough, they can look at that card and be like, oh, okay. So yeah. for yourself, find out what makes you crazy and stop doing that. <laughs> and then with others, same thing, just be ready to serve when you can. I love both of those things because yeah, I think that gives me some inspiration around a piece, a couple of things in the entrepreneurial journey that I could do a little bit different of, I allow myself <laughs> to continue to do with this thing but then gets me angry and there's no need. Like that could easily be something now that someone else could handle. And really the beautiful reminder of like, you can turn off your phone or you can have these hours that these are the hours you work and everything else. Um, we used to say in the web development, you know, there's no such thing as a web emergency kind of <laughs> the same thing you're saying is like, this is not an emergency. Like, no, there's no lives on the line. Zero, none right now about this podcast that someone has drama with. So yeah, those are, those are helpful. And also approaching things with that kind of that kindness and that, how can I be of service that in someone's heart is so beautiful. And I think we all need more of that. So I think that's a perfect way to segue into if someone would like to find you and either do a home healing or a home inspection, could you share how they could go about finding you and and maybe what your area of service is? Because I'm imagining the inspection piece at least is pretty local. Yes, yes. Um, I'm here in LA County, Compton, Long Beach, the South Bay, which is like Torrance and Lawndale, Redondo Beach, things of that nature. The furthest I've gone out was I think Sherman Oaks. But um, yes, I'm pretty local here with the home inspections. And I would recommend calling my phone number 424-704-2033. And what a lot of the realtors are doing lately, though, is meeting me on Instagram. So if you want to make sure you get the appointment quick and you just want to get it done, you can message me directly on Instagram and um, ask me my availability. Because sometimes online, I will hold spaces for people. For example, a realtor would be like, I know it's Wednesday. So can you just hold Wednesday for me? So if I don't hear from them like Monday and I follow up, I can open that space for someone else. So Instagram is pretty quick to message me and be like, oh, is there a space now? Because on my website, it'll be closed if, if that's the case. Also, my email, you can email me directly at Jacqueline, J-A-C-Q-U-A-L-Y-N at investmentinspectorsllc.com. I will put all of those links in the episode notes for this so people can look at that and find you directly there too. Yeah, I am I love your Instagram feed because it's a refreshingly different kind of approach. And like, it's such a beautiful combination of home inspection and energy and, and healing. And I just, yeah, I'm sure a lot of people will really enjoy it. So I encourage you all to follow Jacqueline over there. Is there anything else you want to make sure that we add in here before we close out our conversation and get to that last question? Yes. So for the um, home healing packages or full moon ceremonies, mother's blessings, all those type of things, you can email me directly. Or like I said, on Instagram, I booked a lot of jobs on there so we can talk back and forth. And those are the main ways. I am a one woman show here. (laughs) So you will, like I said, if you do call my office and you speak to one of the gal or girl there, you're still going to get me. 
I, I'm the owner and operator, so I do most of the work around here. So that's the difference. You will definitely connect with me in terms of getting your service, how you want it, when you want it. That's amazing. Thank you. Well, yeah. So then the question that I always close out with is what are three ways that you can think of to jumpstart joy in your life, in the world, or in other people's lives? There's the first one I would say is listen. Sometimes you just have to listen to people and give them that space. I find that a lot at the sound baths. They will not say anything in a group, but they'll come and tell me these amazing, remarkable things that happened to them during the sound bath. Or like I said, even your family members, I, I would challenge people to just listen, go slower. You might learn something new about your spouse. <laughs> <laughs> And then the second one to bring joy, I would say love, really express love, even for the plants, even for yourself, just love and gratitude. I think it goes hand in hand to bring joy. If you literally just sit down for a second and look around your room, there's so many things to love. There's so many things to be grateful for. And the last thing I would say is being the light, expressing your light. So I think. That's a little challenging for people who really are servers. Mm -hmm. We want to hide a little bit, not celebrate too much, <laughs> but you don't have to be an egomaniac. You can just express that energy of light, that energy of hope to people, to yourself. So when you feel joyful, even if you have the smallest things happen to you, sit with that for a minute, enjoy that light because we have to have a balance in our life, light and dark. So when it's light, enjoy it. <laughs> Don't let it pass you too quick. <laughs> oh, yes, I agree. Thank you so much. Those are all so very inspired, especially slowing down to listen and being with people. Yeah, there's such joy in that. And when you allow other people to be seen and heard, that's so sadly unusual for so many people that it instills that kind of comfort and joy for them as well. Jacqueline, thank you so much for being on this week. This has been such a treat to get to know you better and learn more about what you do and who you are. Thank you. It was a pleasure. I'm so happy to join you. Jacqueline, thank you so much for being on the show this week. I really loved getting to learn more about you and about what you do. And I really love this special mix of home healing and sound baths and, and home inspection. It's just such a cool business model. If you want to find out more about Jacqueline, I know that she will be offering some sound baths in the, the LA area, Los Angeles area. So be sure and check out her website, follow her on Instagram because she lists it all there as well. And she and I are talking about doing a labyrinth and sound bath offering in 2022. So be sure to get on my newsletter because that's where you'll find out about it. It'll be all online and we are really excited about it. You can find all of the links to all of that stuff over on the website, jumpstartyourjoy.com or jumpstartyourjoy.com forward slash episode 301. So next week on the show, I am really excited to have Marsha Flowers of 5B and Co Candles returning for her second interview. We just hit it off. We, I love the candles that she makes, and it has been really fun over the last year to get to know her better. She has actually made some custom candles for Jumpstart Your Joy, and I'm like over the moon about this. <laughs> so it's so much fun to have her come on and talk about how her business has changed in the last year, some of the new things that she's making and offering, and how she sees intentional comfort. I hope you will come on back next week for that conversation. And until then, I hope that your days are filled with so much joy.